Revelation chapter 14. Amen. Now, one thing I was disappointed was um, Revelation 14, if you kept up um, with the videos in my commentary verse by verse in Revelation 14, was how rich it was with dispensationalism. I wish I could have used a whiteboard for that one. I mean, it was just so much gold mines. And uh, we just finished Revelation 14, so now we're at Revelation 15. If you haven't <clears throat> watched my videos on Revelation 14, I would highly recommend to, for you to watch those videos. It's very, very enlightening, the study. So much dispensationalism in there. Revelation 13, you know, is obviously the chapter a lot of people would probably get fascinated with. But personally, to me, it was Revelation 14 because of the dispensationalism. It was just so rich over there. Uh, your pastor, actually, his favorite so far in his Revelation series was Revelation 2 and 3, the seven churches. The Lord laid it upon my heart where I want to do a one-hour teaching just on seven churches again. You know, that, was, that was so much fun. Yeah. All right, but anyways, let's get down to business. All right, more like fun though, right? All right, Revelation chapter 15 and verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven. Okay, so John sees another sign that's up in heaven. Great and marvelous. So it's obviously great and it's obviously marvelous, right? That's self-explanatory. What is that sign? Seven angels having the seven last plagues. So there are seven angels up in heaven having seven, notice, last plagues. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. So John, he says, number one, so John, he sees a sign up in heaven. As he sees this sign up in heaven, it is seven angels. And these seven, and so I'll just draw wings. Angels do not have wings, actually, Amen. but... I'm just going to draw them. That way it's easier for people to understand. So there are seven angels. And notice that the sign he sees are seven last plagues. Okay? Now, notice that the plagues are called great and marvelous. Did you see that? Yeah. So notice that God's judgment is known to be great and marvelous. Usually when you uh, look at other little ditty devotionals from some sissified Christians or pastors, when they talk about great and marvelous works of the Lord, they look at the positive things, right? Yeah. But what about the negative things? Like his judgment. Yeah. Now that's hard to believe. Now there's nothing wrong, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong in being a Christian, posting great and marvelous works of God in a positive light. I do that a lot of times. But have we ever thought about that with God's judgment? You've got to realize this. Every work of God is good. Amen. It is great and marvelous, whether positive or negative in your life. That's the thing a lot of people don't think about. So we'll see over here that there are seven judgments going on. And with these seven judgments, it says seven last plagues, right? So the seven judgments is actually more accurately the seven last plagues. Now it doesn't say just plagues, it says seven last, right? Yeah. That should be very revealing. That means then that there were other plagues before. Yeah. But these are the last plagues that the Lord is sending. So some people... This is what they try, uh, these seven last plagues, keep reading, it says, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. So within these seven last plagues, it contains what? God's wrath. There's a group out there who believe in the pre-wrath rapture. What does that mean? They believe the church will go through the tribulation, and before God's wrath is poured out, Sometime near the end of the tribulation, they'll be raptured, and then God's wrath will fall. But that's actually inaccurate, because God's wrath, which contains last plagues, shows that his wrath was already going before. That's good. So, if you want, so actually, if you believe in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, guess what? You're actually the real pre-rathers. 
You know why? Because that entire timeline of the tribulation was going through God's wrath and his plagues. That was so evident when we saw the seals at Revelation chapter 6. See, God's wrath was already starting with the beginning of the Antichrist being unleashed, that first seal unleashed. Amen. So we see over here that there were plagues before, and there was God's wrath ongoing before. Okay, so let's keep reading over here. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. So John sees the sea of glass, and it has fire on it. Now, you might recall, I went through this deep teaching, which I'm not going to go through again, <clears throat> about the sea of glass at Revelation chapter 4. At Revelation chapter 4, I mentioned that at the floor of heaven is called the sea of glass. And this sea of glass, which is the floor line of heaven, and that divides the universe... Where our outer space, the stars, nebula, galaxies, etc., on the end of it is the sea of glass in heaven. But this sea of glass is mingled with fire as well. Now, so we see where the sea of glass is. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast. So see the tribulation saints, they won, they conquered the beast, and over his image, they conquered his image, and over his mark, they overcame his mark. So remember, 666. Now remember, if you were there at my Revelation 14 studies on the videos, the interesting part, and over the number of his name. So notice that, his name would have a number. And I mentioned about a really strong possibility about the Antichrist having the name of blasphemy and whatever that was, but a strong possibility was if it's his blasphemous name that has a number, then you can look at the Pope's crown where it goes Vicarius Filii Dei. And then if you only looked at the Roman numerals in that, it would, to it would be 666. So the Vatican didn't like that. So, because a lot of Protestant preachers were actually uh, giving heyday to the Catholic Church on that one. So they actually crossed it out. Now, recent news I've heard, recent rumors I've heard is that they've recently crossed that out, which could be true as well. But I've heard that a long time ago. They were giving so much heyday for that, so then they got rid of it. But anyways, let's return over here. So it's the tribulation saints that overcame the beast image, his mark, etc. They stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. So the tribulation saints are up in heaven, standing on this sea of glass and fire, and then they have what? The harps of God over here. Tribulation saints. Now, these are the people who endured to the end, thus they gotten the victory. But these people are definitely not the church age saints. The church is not going through the tribulation. We are not the tribulation saints who conquer the beast's image and the mark of the beast and go to heaven. Amen. No, the, remember the church is raptured before the tribulation. That was proven at my teachings at Revelation 4. So you can rewind and watch that one. You can also watch Chronology of the uh, Apocalypse. Chronology of the Apocalypse, if you watch that video, it is undeniable proof for a pre-tribulation rapture of the church. So tribulation saints are different from church age saints. And this is proven at verse 3. And they sing the song of what? Moses, Moses. Moses, the servant of God. Moses is obviously God's servant. And notice they sing his song. So notice a Jewish flavor again. We keep saying in dispensationalism, God's program with Israel is separate from the church. So God's program that he's concentrating on the tribulation is not the church, but the nation of Israel. So then where's the church then? The church is gone, that's why. The church has disappeared. So that's why his program is concentrating on the nation of Israel. Notice, and the song of the Lamb. So notice that there is the, the song of Moses. 
Moses represents what? The law, right? And the song of the Lamb, Jesus, right? There's your faith. So notice the tribulation is, again, their salvation is faith and works. That is undeniable. Faith and works, faith and works, faith and works Amen. in the tribulation. So there is just constant proof over and over again. Now, uh, if you remember in my teaching on Revelation chapter 14, verse uh, 2 through 3, notice that another proof is that Remember the 24 elders up in heaven? That represents the Christians, right? That was already proven at my teaching at Revelation 4 and Revelation 5. I'm not going to do that again. But notice that the other proof is Revelation 14, verse 2 through 3. These 144,000, or the tribulation saints, they sing a song that's different from the elders at Revelation 14, 3. And if you recall my teaching at Revelation 5, the elders, what? They sing their song. What? That they're washed by the blood of the Lamb. Whereas over here, the tribulation saints, it's the Lamb and the law. Why? Because it's Jews under the Mosaic law looking at their Messiah, Jesus Christ. See, faith and works. So see, there's so much of a difference with Christians from the Jews. People try to combine the law with Christians, save Christians, but what are you going to do with the Apostle Paul at Galatians and Colossians? I mean, the law is finished. Not only that, the book of John, they recognize that uh, Jesus Christ, he what? He fulfills and gets rid of the entire law. He completed it already for us. So it's already completed and done. Okay. So you're not going to be singing the Song of Moses at Revelation 15, verse 3. Amen. Okay? We're singing what? We're, our song is Revelation 5. That's our song. The Tribulation Saints, that's their song, Revelation 15, 3. What, are their, what do they say in their song? Saying, great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. So his works, remember, his seven last plagues are called great and marvelous, right? They're praising it. Just and true are thy ways. It is just and true, his plagues. You might say, I don't... Really, it is? Yeah, because remember, these tribulation saints, they were persecuted by the Antichrist and the beast. So because of such tremendous persecution, that's why Revelation 6, they sought for vengeance, right? They said, Lord, avenge our blood. But remember, Christians, we don't pray, we don't have a prayer of vengeance, because at Romans chapter 12, we're supposed to bestow good upon our enemies, right? Yeah. See, so there's always a distinction with Christian and tribulation saint. Christian and tribulation saint. We see that over and over again. It makes more sense when you rightly divide, not combine and make it a disgusting mashed potato and milkshake. Just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints. So God, obviously, is the king of saints of all time. Whether tribulation, Christian, Old Testament Jew, he's the king of everything. But they're saying great and marvelous are his plagues that he's bestowing. Why? Just and true, it's fair. Why? Because the tribulation saints went through so much heyday from the Antichrist. They went through hell. All righty. Verse 4, who shall not fear thee, O Lord? Yeah, who's not going to fear God when he sends the plagues? You better fear God. This nation still has not learned its stinking lesson on fearing God. I mean, if, if it's not COVID-19, then God forbid 20 and 21 and whatever numbers are there out there. God's going to have to send everything till they learn their lesson to fear him. And you know what's amazing when we hit Revelation 16? They still don't fear God. This is a wicked nation. Man, Pastor, you're mad. Yeah, I'm mad because what does God have to do to finally get you to open your eyes? Yeah. I mean, it has to take the damnation of hell for you to scream in eternity for you to finally get it. That's sad. That is, um, that is really sad, and that makes me stinking angry how stubborn you are. Can't you just humble yourself right now and get saved? Amen. Just shut up. Just shut up, okay, and stop 
Oh, this is something about Christianity. God, Jehovah, the King James Bible, blah, blah, blah. Shut your stinking mouth. Just shut up, fear God, and get right. Will you? Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? See, obviously you're going to glorify God after what he sends down on you. 